Hey, good morning, everyone. It's Cindy. Welcome to my channel. Um, welcome back for those of you that have been here and um, come and support the channel regularly. Thanks for being here. I appreciate you. Um, today, I have some an interesting technique that I know most things I, you know, I've known and been aware of for quite some time. Um, <clears throat> Very rarely do I come across something that's new, although sometimes I find things that are new used in a, or, or that are old used in a new and different way, which is always fun. Um, so you may have seen this before as well, but I was reminded of this technique recently when I stopped over at a friend's channel and was just kind of binge watching through some of her content. Yeah, and I came across this technique, but I'm going to push that to the side a little bit and do that. Um, in a few minutes. Um, right now, I wanted to thank you all, especially those of you that are new, for coming over and subscribing to my channel. I have now over 500 subscribers, and I'm just thrilled about that. Um, <laughs> trying to be subdued. It's funny when there's nobody here, and I feel like I'm talking myself, but I'm very excited. Um, hold on, i got to turn my volume down on this. I thought I had it all taken care of and I did not. Um, anyway, um, yeah, so that's very exciting, especially since I think if, if you've caught some of my shows, um, especially these um, mornings, these coffee and creativity, um, I've talked about how I kind of went out of the gate real fast and, and real wonderfully um, with the junk journals that I was doing and um, developed a following. And then I kind of stopped doing the junk journals and I stopped posting regularly. And so when I jumped back in again recently, um, many of the subscribers that I picked up in the beginning just were not getting my notifications anymore. I don't know if YouTube changed something or if the algorithm had changed since I wasn't posting. I don't know, I still have the subscribers, but fewer people are watching. So those of you that have come over now, thank you so much. And uh, you're helping me to build this channel back up again. Uh, many of you have come over from my other channel, which is Mimi's Treasure Cottage. Thank you for being here. Um, that probably means that in addition to loving vintage items and thrifting, you also got a creative uh, streak in you. So that's always fun. It's amazing how many of us actually do have a creative side um, and enjoy the vintage stuff as well. So anyway, but getting back to um, reaching that 500 subscriber milestone. So I would like to do a giveaway uh, for all of you uh, as a big thank you for coming over here. So I have made some collages that I had and have been trying, um, have had available for sale here in the studio. Um, and I'm going to give away this little collage. This collage is um, on, it's mounted on a uh, heavy board and it's also on board, but I think they're really cute. So they're signed, they're unique, they're one of a kind. Um, oh, did I put it? I did, I was gonna measure it for you. I think it's three by four. I could be wrong, either that or it goes on a three by four part. Either that or it goes on a three by four frame. When I created it, I, I created it so that it would go in a standard size frame. Hold on, let me see. All right. Um, it is three and a half inches by two and a half inches. So there must be frames out there that can, you know, fit that really nicely. So that is the little collage piece, easily framed, easily shipped. So how you can win this is after the video is done, because I'm live right now, um, in the regular comments, if you will just post something and say, um, I don't know, yeah, just any, any old post, say that you'd like to win or whatever, that would probably help because <laughs> I only want people to win it that want it. <laughs> so you can say that you would like to win. It is, since it is small and easy to be shipped, um, it'll probably have to go as a package because it's rigid, um, which means 
yeah. I'm just thinking about opening it up overseas. So basically anybody can enter. If you're overseas, feel free to enter this as well. Um, and we'll see. Yeah, it should be easy So, um, But you are welcome to enter to win as well. So just post, say I'd like to win. Um, you know, you can tell me about your art side, you know, artistic side if you'd like to in the comments as well. Um, and I will leave that open, oh, let's say a week. So a week from now, which would be May, oh, if this is Wednesday, May 6th. So on May 6th, live on my show, I will um, pick the winner of this little collage piece. So, but you do have to comment on this video and you have to comment after the fact um, in the regular comments. Well, good morning, Susan. I am talking to myself this morning. <laughs> Good morning, Rebecca. That's usually what happens. It takes a while for people to get in here, and I gotta fill the space. And you know, people come in after the fact. So, <laughs> did you guys catch that? That I'm doing a giveaway. So after the video um, is done, in the regular comments, if you're interested in winning this little collage, just comment, um, say that you'd like to win. Um, you can tell me you know, something about your creative side if you'd like to. And next week on Thursday morning live here on Coffee and Creativity, I will pick the winner. And it is open to U.S. and elsewhere. Good morning, Shelly. Thanks for coming. So that was that. And I was talking a little bit earlier about what it is that I'm going to do today for the little art um, tidbit. But before I go into that, I also want to share with you that on <clears throat> excuse me Thursday May 13th during Coffee and Creativity um, I'm not going to have a live show that day but I do have a wonderful show planned for you um, it will be recorded and I've already done it and it is with it's a um, broadcast with another amazing artist and she's been in here before so you guys may have seen her in the comment her name is Jerry Taylor she has a channel here on YouTube called A Happy Porter, but she's an astounding artist. She's an art teacher. She teaches gifted and talented art students, and she does these amazing um, dolls um, as well as other artwork as well. So Jerry and I spent um, close to an hour together talking, and so that will be aired on Thursday, May 13th at 10 a.m. on my channel. And um, of course, you'll see you know, some sort of reminder um, graphic about it sometime or another. But I wanted to give you the heads up because it's exciting. Um, I will be on the road that day. My oldest daughter is being blessed with a commencement from her 2020 graduation from college. So I thought that was wonderful of them that this year they're giving those that missed out last year the opportunity to walk across the stage and celebrate their amazing successes. And for my daughter, it was a wonderful and um, it was a hard road for her to get to that point. So we are just thrilled to celebrate with her. So that's where I will be um, that week. So very exciting. Anyway, so those things I wanted to share with you. Watch my mic. Um, Today's technique, let me tell you a little bit about today's technique. Again, those of you that are watching this after the fact, I've already talked a little bit about it. Um, but this is a technique that I've known about for a while, um, as with many things, because, you know, I go through these phases where I'm jumping in and doing lots of art, and then I don't, and then I, you know, I, any of you that are creative probably recognize that process. Um, so I've known about it for a while, but I was reminded of it watching a friend's um, video. I'm going to put her channel name up here. My friend Mary, um, who's actually part of my local art group here, we get together um, periodically and we create art together. But Mary has a channel, it's Ancestral Beginnings. And I was binge watching her videos the other day, and one of her videos um, it wasn't about this technique, so I'm not taking something that she showed specifically and then redoing it. Um, it was one of many things that she used in an art journal um, book that she was working on. And the post is from March 23rd. It's called Paint and Paper Collage in My Vintage Journal. 
And this was one of many things that she used in that. And I'm like, oh, I know that technique. That's an awesome technique. So I am borrowing it. And um, also it's a way for me to, you know, send you over to Mary to, to check out her channel as well. So I do hope you will um, tell her that I sent you. Anyway, let me remove that. So ancestral beginnings. Take that off. I'm getting better at this stuff. The more I use it, the better, <laughs> the better I'm getting at it. <laughs> All right. Anyway, so the technique, and again, you may have seen it because it's nothing that's, you know, new. The only thing new that I've done that hasn't been something that I've adapted from somewhere else because there really is nothing new under the sun. And this may have been done before too, was that um, pandemic prints that I did, that tidbit, if you go back in my um, videos and see that, that was an aha accidental discovery. And um, yeah, so that was something that I discovered on my own. So if you guys want to check that out, you can. So today, and I'm going to turn on the close-up cam in a minute, but today what I'm using is I'm using more, um, you know, acrylic paint. So I have all of my acrylic paints. I did bring out black and white today as well because um, I thought that that I might need it. <laughs> I actually had brought some paint brushes today just in case I need them. But the main part of this technique that you're going to want to have is, of course, you're going to want to have your paper or whatever it is that you're going to be doing this technique on, onto. And you're going to want, so I have that, and then I have some of these papers that we did last time. And then you're going to want some stencils. Um, you can choose a variety of different stencils um, to use. I just have all these different things. These are from... I believe these might be labeled. Are they labeled? I've got so much stuff on them, it's hard to tell if they're marked or not. I think these came from the crafters workshop, these big stencils. Um, these are these are older stencils. These are from magazine the magazine days um, when oh this one's marked. Yep, I was right. The crafters workshop. And I'm pretty sure that they still um, are in business. The craftersworkshop.com. And this one was etched up there, so you can see it. Um, <clears throat> but this is some of the many things. Um, when I was publishing the magazine, we had companies that would send us stuff for the design team. And so I was a member of the design team, so I still have a bunch of that stuff left over. Um, but you can use anything. Um, sequin waste, I picked this up probably at um, Michael's or uh, Hobby Lobby or something like that. Maybe even Walmart something that you can pick up. So just a variety of different stencils um, that you'll want to have. So let me bring in my close-up camera. And there we go. Hello. Um, so let's go ahead and use a blank piece. Start off with. There we go. All right. <clears throat> so How's everybody this morning? I'm always, you know, it's so cliche to talk about the weather, but the weather is very important to me. I don't know why that is, but it really is. So for the last two days, we've had amazing weather here in Northeast Ohio. Beautiful, like 80 degree days. Gorgeous. Yesterday was a little bit cloudy, but still wonderful. Today, it's going to be a high of 60, and it's just nonstop rain. So what's it like in your neck of the woods, and where are you guys from? Some of you I know where you're from, but some of you I do not. Um, all right, so I'm taking, I'm getting my palette ready. I always like to use these, um, it's a way of recycling them, but these little uh, meat trays, these beautiful palettes. They make beautiful little um, things for doing. Here, let's do this. They make beautiful little uh, places for you to roll out your paint in a thin layer and be able to use it that way. Um, just as a place to, you know, support your paint to use it. They're just wonderful. They're really quick. You can put beads in here if you're a beater. I mean, they these are lovely little pieces. And they're styrofoam, so they're not real. Although it does say, it does have the recycle sign on the back, so I'm not really sure about their recyclability. I just know that um, we weren't able to put it in the um, 
recycling because it was styrofoam. So any type of styrofoam we weren't allowed to use. Oh, that's nice, Susan. Where are you from, Susan? What part of the country are you in or out of the country? I'm not sure if I remember if you've purchased from me on my other channel or not. <laughs> Got a lot of data floating around in here, but that sounds wonderful. Um, I think next week in May, it's going to turn around a little bit. I don't think we're going to get back up into the 80s, but we're going to have nice seasonable weather. I consider seasonable weather for Ohio to be in the 70s in May um, with a little flirting with 80 um, and lows in the, you know, no lower than 60 for a daytime high. Okay. Yeah, it's nice down there. <laughs> I'm often jealous of the weather. Actually, the south of Ohio gets better weather than we do here because we're on Lake Erie. We seldom see the sun, um, especially during the spring and the fall. So when we get beautiful, sunny days, it's really, really nice. All right, so so let's get some of this, these colors. Let's see what colors do I want to mess around with today. I don't know. I think for these initial overlays, it doesn't really matter. Let's give something dark so you can see it. Not dark. Debating, you got to see the creative process here. That's, it. That's why it's kind of fun to do this live because you guys actually get to see how I think. Not that I'm any, like, you know, monumental whatever, but I think it's interesting to see the artist process and how different artists think and how they come up with things, you know why they choose the things that they do. So I'm just choosing, um, let's put the camera back on again. There we go. Um, I'm just choosing this because it's darker and I want it to be something that you can really see. So the now oh, the other important thing that you're going to want to do if you're doing this is you're going to want to have some sort of wipes and these are just things that I got. These might even be from my parents' estate, these wipes. And um, they were dry. They, if you get a pack of these somewhere at an estate sale or whatever, and you hold it and you think, oh, these are so old, they're going to be dry, can't use them. You can. Just open them up. Whatever, whatever they are, open them up and just pour some water right on top of that. And then let it sit for a little while. And it will resaturate the soap and the um, towelettes that are in there. And they're usable again. So don't let that throw you. You can definitely use them. So sometimes people, I mean, they might toss these out or give them to you for a quarter or something. I'm telling you, it's a really good deal to, to grab them. Four mile, or four day, 100 mile yard sale. Oh my gosh. I'm going to have to write that down. I'll have to try to remember to come back in and do that. Why? Because I'm trying to keep a list of things that I might want to do. <laughs> um, I want to go to Texas and go to their big flea market there in Can Canton. Do they call it Canton or Canton? I don't know. Um, here in Ohio, we have a Canton, Ohio. But I want to go there. Um, there is the world's largest yard sale. I think that's what it's called, which runs up through the um, western side of Ohio and then all the way down into Alabama. I want to do that. Um, there's a whole bunch of different things that I want to do, and I feel like this summer is going to be jam-packed. I also want to do a meetup here for vintage thrifting. Um, you guys are the first to hear that. And I may want to do more than one because the area is full of some really awesome um, places to go. As far, especially if, if you like antiquing, I've found a lot of really fun antique um, stores. And then we do have some neighborhood sales too. But last year, so many of them were, were canceled. I don't know what we're going to have this year. All right. So stencils, paper, paint, and wipes. Those are the most important things. So I'm going to put that here. I have very little space. Does anybody else need like a mile? long table in order to work. <laughs> I really feel that I always I always need more, way more space than I am. All right. Let's put this over here. I have more room. 
Okay, so what I'm just gonna do, put some, some paint in my palette and let's get my paintbrush. Oh, the other thing that I have is I have, I'll show you here, it's easier. I have a jar of water and inside the jar are these little, those little floral stones. And I got this technique from a friend of mine named Jane. Jane has an Instagram, um, whatever you call it. She has an Instagram. Um, I'm trying to think of what, I think she has a blog too. I don't know if she does it anymore or not, but she used to be anything but plain Jane. Her Instagram may just be her name, Jane Whistle. W-E-T-Z-E-L. I don't know. But anyway, I got this idea from her. This is an amazing thing. It's fabulous. It's so simple, but yet so fabulous. So you put these floral stones in here and you fill your jar up with water so that when you're using paint and you go in to, to clean off your paintbrushes, you have something to rub your paintbrushes against and it gets the it gets the paint off and cleans them up really nicely. And then, um, you know, when I just empty it, I just put my hand over and just pour it out and keeps the stones in there. Sometimes I'll, re re you know, well, that's not true, not sometimes, all the time, I'll run a little bit of water in there, rinse it, and then, and then it keeps really nicely. All right, so I have that as well for the paint. And <laughs> I, I need to glue my, I forgot what this is called, for real? I have to glue that back onto my, paintbrush but it's what I have handy um so I'm just gonna I'm sure I need a lot of paint this is a lot of paint I'm thinking now that I know how much paint I actually need to do this then I might have wanted <clears throat> to use a bigger either put it directly on the paper or use a bigger brush all right this one's really dirty Use this. I'm just going to put that down since it's going on the wet. All right, so I laid that stencil down on the top of my paint. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of my wet wipes. And I'm just going to go I'm going to rub off paint in that area. I might not want, I don't know, I was thinking I might not want something like ridiculously juicy or I might want heavier paper to do this technique because my wipe is really juicy and I'm using a very lightweight um, typewriter paper. I don't know how that's going to affect it. But so you can see, I'm leaving some paint, but I'm taking off. Let's do, let's do everywhere there's a mark. Ooh, and I've got some going on around the outside edge there. If you don't like that, you can just be more careful. All right, so now let's lift it. Let's see what, ah, crud. All right, so maybe. I got some stick to that. I'm gonna try, but look at how you've got this cool. Here, I'm gonna raise it up for you. I'm not sure what the key is. Maybe it's because of all the paint it had something to stick to. Let's try it the other way. Because I don't think it really matters for me. I was just trying to keep my my uh, stencil clean. But the other thing that you can do, you guys, too, I'll show you that, which is kind of fun. No, I got my paper, not paper, my, uh, I got it wet. Is it Jane Wets? Yeah, with a Z. Yeah, with a Z. I'll try to remember to put it in the um, description afterwards. She's a fabulous artist. I actually, I'm meeting with her later today. And I told her, I said, well, you can come be a guest on my live, but she doesn't want to do that. <laughs> she's, one, she's one that doesn't like to have her face in her um, posts or her, you know, whatever. She's talked about doing a YouTube channel. 
but I think she's a little intimidated by that as well. Uh, it would be awesome if she did, though, because you guys would love her. All right, I have a little bit of paint left on my wipe and also around here. And we're going to just see what that does. Oh, I've got it the opposite way. Look at that. So you, you can do all kinds. You know, a lot of art is about experimentation. So I picked up some more purple paint there. Look at that. So you can do that. But the, the baby wipe mutes that color. I'm all about techniques and then watching other people take off with them and do really cool stuff. So look at that. This looks a little bit muddy, but that looks pretty good. And depending on what you're going to do, um, that's fine too. All right, let's, but let's get back to this really cool technique and see if I can make it work without pulling off the um, paper this time. So let's see if we can get it to work. I'm afraid it's going to stick to the wet. <laughs> All right, actually, let's put it back up here. While I get that going on, yeah, I know a lot of really amazingly creative people. Um, some of them I know from mag. Well, actually, most of them I know from my magazine days. I met some fabulously creative people. All right, we're still going to use purple because it's what's on my paintbrush. Put it back in here. Okay. And this time I'm just going to, I'm going to go with this because I'm lazy and I discovered that I needed a lot of paint. So we're going to do this. So imagine if you have, if we can get it, figure out how to get it to work without it um, pulling up the paper. Imagine working in your art journal and how what an easy technique this is. And all of these techniques, and if you watch Mary's video, and I'm going to put that up again. If you watch Mary's video, um, Mary used this technique as one of many. So it's just one of those things where if you layer and you try various things, you'll get a lot of, you know, some really cool <clears throat> effects. All right, so let's go on here, and we're going to try it again. And I wasn't as worried this time about <clears throat> getting it on there when it was really, really wet. I let it kind of dry for half a second, and I'm still able to pull off the paint. So that's good. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's nice. That works really nicely. So I think the key is um, to use the clean side of my stencil. And I'm going to clean that off, too, so I have a use it later. But look at that. So imagine, you know, you know, working in your art journal and then laying your stencil on over top and then pull it off and get a more beautiful effect. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. And so as that dries, I don't know where I'm looking, as that dries, we'll go back in there and we'll add a couple other layers while we're chatting today. Oh, I want to go back to the comments. Get out of that. Go back to the comments. There you go. Yeah, so actually I'm going to type it here. Jane. Is that Kathleen? Yeah. What is her name and her chant or her YouTube um, thing? Maybe Jane Wet, just W E T Z. And I have both of my phone and my computer. Well, the phone is where I do Instagram. They're both <laughs> being used. I can't check it out. Well, hey, Julie, good morning. Thanks for coming. We're playing with a stencil technique, playing around, seeing how it works, getting ideas. Let's do a different color. 
this will be fun because I showed you that my little, I think that, what is it, a pearl is um, oh, not too bad. Loose. I was afraid I was going to lose the top of my paintbrush in the water. <laughs> All right, I did not. Let's try a different color on a different sheet because we're going to go back to that purple and try something different there as well. All right, let's try. I'm going to try this color and a different pencil. Let's do a different one. So let's get ready. Put that one dry. That one has a lot going on. We'll try that one. So the stencils today that I'm using are by the Crafters Workshop. Is the amount of paint important or just that it's wet? I mean, it's only going to lift where there is paint. And when I did that last one, like I said, that first one that I did, I really think you're coming in, you didn't get to see it. Where did it fall? I actually folded it up. <laughs> what happens when you hate your work and you, you fold it up and get rid of it? The first one that I did, I laid my stencil down with my painty side down and I tried to pull off and I wound up pulling off a lot of the paper. Um, so the second time I did it, I put my, this stencil, I, the first time I put this part down and I feel like that grabbed that paint and lifted it with the paper as it was drying on there. So the second time I laid this side down, the clean side down, and I seem to have more luck. Um, excuse me. But I also, on the second one, did it after it had started to dry a little bit. So the first one, I think, I put down when the paint was still kind of wet. So these are things that we're learning <laughs> as we're doing this. So those are the two different things. So to answer your question, Rebecca, um, I have a feeling after that little experiment that you may not want to put down a whole lot of paint because I don't think we really want it to be really juicy wet. It appears to pull off um, even. Let's, we're going to try this. This has dried for a little bit. Let's see what we can do here. Oh, look at that. See? So I think, yeah, I think that we're going to want to do it after the paint has started to dry a little bit. So for that reason alone, you don't want to put too much um, paint on because it will take you a while. See how that came up real nice? It'll take you a little while for it to dry to the point where it's not going to stick to stuff. So that was dry enough this time that it didn't stick to the back of the stencil. I mean, I don't see any paint on the back of the stencil at all, but it still picked up the paint there. So yeah, that's good. That was a good little learning. I'm going to let that dry a little bit. I'm going to put this on. And I just discovered before I needed more paint, not so much that I wanted it to be wet. I just wanted it to cover, right? Because you're only going to be able to pull up where there's, <laughs> see what I'm saying? Where there's paint. A little bit of glue will fix that right up. <laughs> All right, so I have that. And I'm going to lay this, actually both of this, this will be an intro, we're going to, this is an experiment. Both sides of this stencil have paint on them. Now, why don't I clean them off? Everybody has their own um, way of doing things and their own reason. I really enjoy when there's accidental deposits, if you will, of the paint that has already been used on a stencil. I think that accidental art is intriguing. So that's part of the reason why I don't clean off my stencils when I'm using acrylic paint. I leave them there. If I'm using something that's going to move, though, by the way, if I'm going to use um, ink sprays or something else that's water activated, I've learned to clean that stuff off, though, because that will go all over everything and make a horrible mess the next time you try to use it. So. Um, anyway, all right, so we've let that dry a little bit. I'm going to pull this down like that. And I'm still using this wipe. I'm not sure if we're going to have any um, purple 
come off or not. Now because this is lighter, I don't know if it's not pulling off as much or if I'm just not noticing it. It is coming off on the white. Let's see what we got. Okay. And look at that. Well, you guys can't let's pull it up closer. That's kind of cool. So I had a little bit of like purple residue on my wipe. And so not only did it lift some of the green, it put down a little bit of that purple. I kind of like that. Well, you gotta love the happy accents, right? Like Bob Ross is the thing. What happy accents. Alright, and I am gonna wipe this. I'm gonna put one and wipe it off. So those of you that are here today in the chat. Let me know what your favorite, um, what's your go-to art? Are you a paper artist? Are you a book artist? Are you a painter? Um, do you do more work in a an art journal? What's your, what's your go-to? Because even those of us that do mixed media often usually have a go-to um, type of paint or type of... Um, media that we go to all the time. Um, I have always been a book artist. Um, I think that's kind of where I really got started when I was thrust into art. I mean, I've always been an artist. I just didn't know I was an artist. <laughs> um, but I think back when I, so a lot of my work is book related, altered books, art, junk journals, things like that. That's kind of where I probably if I'm known for anything, if, if for those few people that know me, um, I think that's probably what they would say. Then uh, for a while, I've been doing the vintage inspired stuff with collage. Um, but yeah, and I, I, I would like to hone my skills in oil painting, because um, I think I do have some skills that, that could be worked on. Um, I just, I just don't get around to it as much because I think I enjoy paper. I really enjoy collage and I enjoy, um, I enjoy, I enjoy art journal type things, you know, with all the layering and the difference. So layering and collage, not only with paper, but paints and, and inks. And I love that kind of stuff. Mod Podge, collaging, distressing. Yeah. Oh, cool. You take frames. Cool. Anyway, so you can see that my little hole is wet. Yeah. My last paper actually stuck to it a little bit, so I'm going to keep it a little bit drier before I stick something else down. And we're going to go back to that first one if it's if it's dry enough. We'll see. I didn't bring over my dryer, my heat pad today to speed things up. So it's still cool to the touch. It's still not completely dry. So I'm not sure <laughs> I have my HEPA filter going. It's like a little white noise over here, but it's blowing some air. We'll stick it over there and see if it helps. <laughs> Use all kinds of things with art. Um, yeah, but, but that's the thing with me, though. Going back to what your go-to media medium is, I tend to work a lot in paper, and but I love to try things. That's why I think it'd be dangerous if I would like stick to any one thing and like work at it um, and, you know, perfect some skills because I just totally, totally enjoy learning new things, um, new techniques. And consequently, though, I have supplies coming out, my, you know what, because I collect things to work on other stuff, um, which is why I haven't. I took one class one time on doing um, chalk pastels. And fortunately, they supplied the pastels. I'm looking around because I'm remembering. Because um, I wasn't sure I was going to like it. And that first class, I'm not sure if it was the class. I wasn't that, I wasn't that into it. 
but it keeps drawing me back. Like, I think I want to try it, but I'm afraid I don't want to invest. I did find some chalks at an estate sale. Um, they're probably student grade, but that doesn't matter. I'm a student. <laughs> so I might try it sometime just to see if I like it. I haven't been creating has been traveling in your RV. Well, that's fun. You know, um, a few years ago when my daughter was in school, my youngest daughter, high school, she was on a travel softball team and we went to South Carolina for a tournament and um, I packed myself a little art kit. Um, so just an on-the-go art kit and I told myself to work on it and actually it was a really good thing that we did <clears throat> that I did because that tournament ended up being rained out like the whole we were there for a whole week and I'd say the first three days of the tournament were just you the fields were so wet that nobody was going to play so we were stuck in this hotel you know um most of the time and uh, I was really happy to have that little art box <laughs> so I did all kinds of stuff with that um, I took a little teeny weeny moleskin journal probably about that big and uh, did a whole bunch of different stuff in there all right I don't know if this is dry enough but we will see we will see all right let's Let's paint a thin layer of the green. Um, excuse me, I'm going to paint a thin layer of the green on top of this. And I'm putting it in my palette because, because this is wet and I have other paint on there, I don't want to put it directly on the paper. And my little paintbrush is a little wet from being cleaned, so I'm wiping it off on my apron. <laughs> got it, got it. I kind of love that. All right. So I got a nice thin layer on my brush. I'm going to just go maybe over here. And I want it to be enough of a layer that it covers over that purple. All right, so I got that. Let's come in. I'm gonna put this down. I'm gonna take those because those are different than what we already have on there. And I'm gonna use a cleaner wipe. Oh, I'm gonna like this. I can tell already. Yeah, look at that. That came out cool. I like that a lot. Let's bring it up here so you can see it better. Look. Look how I did that. And I like because I can still see the brush strokes on that through the paper. Yeah, that's cool. I like that. Let's try it in a different area. Oops. Lost the top of my brush again. Let's, well, first of all, let's see what kind of... Let's do some of this sequin waste. Love the little dot all over this one. I'm going to come back in here. Come back in with the clean one. I'm pulling off something off of that sequin wave, so I may not have cleaned off ink or something. That'll be interesting to see what that does. All right, I'm finding maybe it's because the um, circles are closer together and I'm not getting as much contact with the paper with my um, white 
I was finding that I wasn't really pulling off as much paint as I would like. But that came out cool. I like that. Look at that. Cool. So basically, I could keep going with that, right? Can you guys see the possibilities in this? I could keep going with that, and I could keep letting it dry and adding layers and um, just changing it up. I really like that flower um, motif, this one right here. Um, so I could, I could do something, I don't know what, to try to bring that back out. Well, let's do this. Let's try to bring that back off of the, let's see if we can lift some of that green and see if I can get that motif back out again. Let's try that. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Look at that. <laughs> Exactly. That's that's great. Look, look at that. Isn't that cool? And let's go over here because there's some on the other side. Yeah, two different sensors going on on that side, so it's hard to tell. So I've got some of the fun sequin waste dots, but I was still able to pull off some of that green and leave that awesome technique on top, or technique stencil design on top. Love that. Let's go back over here. What's in the end there? Do I want, want more of this? Maybe I do. Maybe I want more of this. Let's see. Let me go with this. All right, so the moral of the story is that as long as it hasn't, like, probably cured, if it's still, you know, if it's dry but not completely dry, you can still pull it off. I'm not sure I like that because I don't think that was, I don't think that has as much um, contrast and definition to it, that last one because of all the little lines that were on it before. But you know what? The, the glory of this little technique, as we have seen, is that we can go back in with another color, go over top of it, and then we can pull back out, right? And no, I'm not using open acrylics. I am just using the cheap, inexpensive brand from Walmart. So yeah, um, namely because this is little trial things you know so you don't want to use your really good paints on that but open acrylics the open acrylics um allow you to work with them longer these guys will dry um they'll dry pretty quick so yeah basically i think what what i discovered here what we discovered is that as long as we don't um let it dry completely and cure i think we can still lift paint so it leaves a lot of possibilities for going in and lifting more things and building up layers and stuff. <laughs> so that's really cool. Hey, if you guys are on Instagram, I also, for my art channel, I also have an Instagram and it's just Cindy Duncan Arts over there as well. Um, follow me and um, you can send me direct messages and send me pictures and stuff over there. That would be really cool. Um, if you play around with this technique, I would love to see what you do with it. You know, I, I, that's part of the thing. I guess maybe it's the teacher in me. That's my innate um, thing is I love to present. And then I want to see what you guys come up with, what you do with it. Because, you know, that's the whole point is, is letting you um, experiment and do something fun with something, you know, that I've shown. Hopefully a little bit of inspiration there uh, for a new technique. <clears throat> Anyway, that's what I have for you today. Uh, don't forget if you popped in here towards the end that I am doing a contest. So you can go back to the beginning and look and see what you need to do in order to win. I am, <clears throat> it's a contest because I have reached 500 subscribers on my art channel and I am giving away this little collage that I did. And it's a nice um, solid piece. And it's really cute. It'll be, it can be framed in a um, standard size frame. So check that out. And um, check out, again, I'm going to plug it again here at the end. 
on May 13th. I have that broadcast that day is going to be about 45 minutes to an hour with Jerry Taylor. Um, she's an amazing artist. She does the Gothic girl dolls and um, she has a YouTube here called A Happy Hoarder. So that'll be on May 13th. Um, hey, those of you that like the vintage and the reselling, I am also doing a live show um, this weekend on another channel on Sunday on the Trusty Huckster Mercantile channel. I am doing a deep dive on longer burger baskets. So it's something that pops up from time to time in the reselling community, and a lot of people don't know a whole lot about it. So I thought I would share. Um, I was a consultant for probably about five years, and I have <laughs> I have oodles of baskets in my house. So we're going to talk about that Sunday, eight o'clock. Trusty Huckster Mercantile. Of course, next week I'll be back here. Tomorrow I will have my um, studio vlog posted as well. Um, you have to do less shopping. <laughs> now you'll just change what you buy, Susan. <laughs> you, you'll go from buying, uh, you know, one thing into buying art supplies. It's funny. One year I challenged myself to make Christmas presents from only things that I had. I couldn't go out and buy anything other than like a staple, like glue or... Um, I'm trying to think of anything else that I considered a staple. But other than that, everything had to be something that I had on hand. And that was a wonderful Christmas. I really enjoyed that. Um, and hopefully the people that received things enjoyed that as well. So anyway, all right, that's it for today. Thank you guys for joining me. And I will see you the next time. Bye. Have a great day.